Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another video on Sid's Garage. You guys already know my name's Sid, and I am working on a gooseneck trailer. At the beginning of this series here, it was supposed to be a dovetail added on. Turns out that the owner changed his mind. So what we're doing now is, if you guys followed my last video, I've been cutting out some fenders, and I did that with an acetylene torch, which is right over there. And now I'm having to measure out how long these fenders need to come out because in the state of California, legally, your trailer can only be 102 inches long. So moral of the story, I'm trying to figure out how long I need these things to be. So there's already going to be a cover over this, right? So what we're going to... All right, guys, so long story short, this clip right here... I asked the owner of how far that they want the fender to go out from underneath the actual trailer and they said all the way to the rub rail and then um, not to cut anything and just to have it 21 inches so I guess I'm bringing it out as far as the rub rail and I'm going to be cutting it bending it here. I'm working from home today and the only reason why I'm going to tell you this right now is because I don't have any kind of power at the um, other shop that I've been working at. So I decided to bring everything here. We're going to cut everything off the bed of my truck. I gotta move this trailer, hook up all of the hoses to the acetylene, and then bend everything. This here is 21 by 7. These here are just um, flat stocks. These here are the fenders for the trailer. So let me go ahead and uh, show you guys what's going on. This here is the big old slab that we're going to cut. Brand fucking new material. Gotta get it up in the truck. So I'm going to cut it. It's not that I don't have the room. It's just that my fucking table is not that big. The acetylene torches right here. This is what they look like. I'm gonna end up cutting it on this white line. There's gonna be three of them. This here are the lines. You got your acetylene, your oxygen. I'm just gonna hook these up real quick. And travel with the caps on. Get me a wrench. There we go. Come on, beach. We're gonna back this bitch up a little bit. I'm gonna grab my PPE. I'm fucking cold. I'm taking these hoses off so I can get like more direct transfer gases and oxygen <sighs> so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna open this just slightly and then i'm gonna open this these here are already set you want to open up the oxygen all the way so that's what you want to do the settling is not you want to take your torch here so you can see where it's at this is the pressure of how much you have in there I'm gonna put it on eight. Other people put it between nine and ten, whichever I put it on eight. Here's how much you have the PSI or the um, oxygen. It just reads how much you have in there. This here is the pressure that you're at. As for the oxygen, I am at 35. I have to open up the valve on the um, on this thing right here. Have to open this hair up all the way open this here up a little bit make sure it comes out and look at the pressure gauge as well so as i'm setting this here up we're going to open up the oxygen tank valve all the way how much oxygen i have and this here is how much that it's giving out so it's at 35 of a pressure now we're, we're practically ready this here reads eight on the um acetylene and then this here is how much we have in the tank so i'll probably have to get a new thing here soon We're gonna open up our flame, oxygen valve, pull the trigger a little bit, and there you go. We're gonna warm it up, put it pretty cold. You can see the heat like coming off of it. The way that these oxygen and acetylene tanks are faced with the regulators, they were faced away from me in the back of me like three feet away from me in my bag i didn't mention this but you want to not have these regulators face towards you because the pressure in these can pop off 
those things if you're not looking out for yourself. You want to be an eighth away? There's one. This is what's going to happen. We're going to use this here as a template, all right? This here's a template that I bring from the shop. So here are the bits and pieces we're going to be using a little bit. So now that I have four of these here done, I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing it. It's very, very simple stuff. It's just time consuming. So after I get done bending them with the torch, all I'm doing is just letting them rest out here, um, doing whatever they're going to fucking do. So I have already replaced this because of my dumbass and how the chain on it. And then um, I might have to get another one of the acetylene. I just replaced this one this morning. I'm gonna pick which side, the top, which lines to the bottom. What I'm gonna do beforehand is measure middle. So this here's 21 inches long. And we're gonna mark it at 11. Take our square, pretty much just mark it right down the line. And weld the middle down. Well, weld right here, right here. I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse. I forgot to mention something to you guys. We're gonna do one side at a time, right? So basically, you're going to place your vice grips kind of like in the middle towards the ends, like that. And try not to hurt yourself, try not to bring yourself. As tight as you can get it, but to where there's a nice grip to where they won't come off by themselves. And then just close them off together like that. Now there's other ways to fucking do this. I don't recommend doing it because it's going against gravity when the heat's coming down. All right, so one of two things. Either if you're going to be making these or an easier way to bend these, either with an acetylene torch, oxyacetylene. This is the one way I'm doing it. I don't recommend it this way. If you have a English wheel, then you can do it like that. Or if you have something else, like run your truck over some metal or something. I don't know. I'm just kidding. But this is the best way that I found out how to bend it. I tried every other method. I have an English wheel. It's just not set up and I don't have the room for it right now. So this here was the alternative solution. I personally tried to put this here over pipes and tried to use clamps beforehand and it took fucking forever. But I figured out a solution of using two vice grips that are on the bottom of this quarter inch material. This is all steel. I'm bending it, trying to get the metal as hot as I can, but with the light that I have with the garage open. Also, with the CAD, meaning the uh, cardboard aided design, I don't recommend it because it will catch fire. You saw it right there. It caught fire. I recommend doing something out of metal and using that as an example. So right here I got ahead of the video, at least tried to, but I ended up creating a little bit of a problem for myself and ended up not turning them right. So here's me fixing it on a seed channel that was left over from beforehand. Here the generator, we're back at the shop. I've been trying to get this here, fucking figured out the end. The other side was like completely easy. I don't know what the fuck happened. But, um, yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened. It was like tapping into missing over here, and then it's like perfectly aligned right here. So, I, I don't know, but I mean, it fit somehow. Same with this side here, and then the same here with this side as well. Um, I just took clamps, this big old gap, I'm just gonna fucking fill it in. I have the acetylene torch, oxy acetylene, and I bent all these here. This here is from Harbor Freight. This big old clamp. This has helped me resolve this issue. Okay. Now, am I gonna get another one from Harbor Freight? Absolutely. I'm going to. Because that shit was amazing. And then um, this vendor, it's like all supposed to be leveled and shit, but as you can tell, it's fucking not. But it's a pain in my ass to get this all fucking leveled. So right here I'm just taking off the lugs, all of them, using doubles.
the jack underneath the axle and the hub to lift it up underneath the U-bolts. So the equalizers that are in between all the leaf springs and things, yeah, um, that was hitting the undercarriage. So I went ahead, went over to the cherry picker, picked that up. The whole back of the trailer is still held up by the cherry picker, so I had to jack it up in order for the wheel to get in position. So the reason why that I lifted up this hub and this axle on the sides is because eventually one of these days, this whole trailer is going to be rolling on the street, which means that the wheels are going to be going up and down bumps and all kinds of shit. This here has a quarter inch thick material and I was trying to bend it um, with the clamps. It worked a little bit. The way that I was working them, I wouldn't put it that way. Like I wouldn't put them the way that I was having them. I was parching them, trying to get them as hot as I could, but they have room. Now I was just getting these other ones. I did this here with every single hub. Every single one. Put the tire on, took the legs off, put it on. I had to maneuver this rim on this hub because it wouldn't go on the right way. So eventually I just uh, put the lugs in the holes and it looks badass with these fucking fenders on there. Molly the builder, not the planner. Okay, put you guys down. Okay, should I bring my microphone? Yeah, you should. I did it. Put this other rim on, take a picture of it. So with this fender and this wheel that is added on, I had to cut the actual extended rim itself because there needed to be more room up above the tire to the frame. So there's a three inch difference from the frame to the tire, that's why we put a fender. I didn't really have much footage at the end. I thought that I recorded myself, but I guess I didn't.